Warning, this video is going to contain a substantial amount of gamer rage. If you can't handle the gamer rage, get the heck out of town. Get out of my video. Sony announced that Spider-Man is going to be a post-launch DLC character for Marvel's Avengers, the Crystal Dynamics Square Enix joint that's being made. That's fun news right off the bat. Oh, there's some, <laughs> there's some uh, caveats there, namely that uh, Spider-Man is a PlayStation 4 and 5 exclusive character. Um, and before I get into my opinions on that, that are very clear by the, by the thumbnail probably, let's uh, contextualize this announcement here. So Marvel's Avengers is a game that Crystal Dynamics is making. It's basically Destiny, a class-based looter shooter type deal with a single player campaign attached to it. Um, they're very cagey on what the game actually was, but now that people are finally playing it, that's, that's kind of what the accepted consensus is. It's it's essentially Destiny, but with some differences and a uh, single player campaign thrown on top of it. But Spider-Man as a post-launch character has been a rumored slash just kind of talked about thing for a while now. Um, and the idea that he was going to be Sony slash PlayStation exclusive was also something that was talked about for quite a bit. Um, at least in the circles that I knew, there was there was talk about like, you know, less rumors, less like leaks and rumors, more just like, hey, this is probably likely, especially considering uh, the Insomniac Spider-Man games that are exclusive to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 when, you know, the new one comes out. It was all just talk up until Monday, August 3rd, uh, which is today at the time of this recording, um, where Sony came out and was like, hey, this is happening. This is the case. Uh, Spider-Man is coming to Marvel's Avengers and he will be PlayStation exclusive. So the other bit of background that will provide some more context for things I'm going to talk about later is in the comic books. Um, there is a line of comics called the Gamerverse, um, and it's, it's actually more of an editorial, like a publishing thing, like a marketing logo. It's basically just a logo that they slap on things. I'll explain more about that later. But what you need to know right now is that there was a line of comics called Gamerverse that were under the moniker Gamerverse, um, where they told stories uh, in the Insomniac world, uh, with the Insomniac Spider-Man world, um, and they, they had adventures with him in there. Uh, along with, more recently, they've been publishing some prelude comics to Marvel's Avengers leading up to A-Day, I believe, um, or after it, I'm not certain. They lead up to the events of the game. Gamerverse was a logo that was put on these Spider-Man comics that took place in the Insomniac world and these Avengers comics that took place in the Crystal Dynamics world. Okay, that's the background. Back to the announcement. The announcement being that Spider-Man is coming to Marvel's Avengers in early 2021 with the caveat that he is exclusive to the PS4 slash PS5 to the PlayStation ecosystem. I absolutely despise this. From a base level, Spider-Man coming to the Avengers game makes sense, sounds great, I like me some Spider-Man, I like me some Peter Parker, throw him in there, cool time. I have a lot of concerns about just adding new characters into this in general, but why? Why are you making him exclusive to PlayStation? What's the what's the deal there? And I will disclaim, I am planning on getting the game on PC because I like to play multiplayer games on PC. It's just easier to communicate with friends and stuff online. Um, but but even if I was getting it on place on on my PS4 Pro or the PS5, remember that? Where the hell that comes out? Where the hell we learn how much that is? Maybe I won't buy it if it's eight million dollars. Even then, I'd be like, that sucks. Because I'm sure people love Spider-Man and either don't have a PlayStation or, you know, just want it on a different system like me. And, you know, that's the rub, right? It is what it is. Exclusives are a thing. And I understand that. Like, I'm no stranger to exclusivity. Um, a big reason why I have a PS4 is because of its exclusive games. But those are entire games. <laughs> those are not online multiplayer games that they are adding an entire character class to that you can only play on one console. Like this announcement is just so business and marketing based, it's insane. And it's so, I don't know, tone deaf to gamers that like nobody wants this. Like it, the only people that are going to find joy in the fact that he's exclusive are people who aren't gonna think about it, who are just like, I'm getting it on, on PlayStation anyway, so that's fine by me. Or the little squealing console war fanboys who were like, haha, yeah, another 
another uh, notch on my belt, my little Sony fanboy belt. Like, who else has a positive there? <laughs> well, if you already have a PlayStation and you're already planning on getting uh, Avengers on PlayStation, that's great. Maybe if you were undecided uh, and and like what console you wanted to get on, this will tilt you in that direction. But like, these are the things that the people who came up with the idea of making Spider-Man exclusive were thinking is like, oh, we'll tilt the people who are undecided what system they're gonna get it for in the direction of us. Or maybe we'll get them to buy our entire console just so they can play Spider-Man, this one character class in this one video game. Like, how much profit do, you, do they think they're gonna make based on having Spider-Man in here? It's just, yeah, I hate it. I hate it. Now, aside from the business aspect, there is one thing that I was kind of considering leading up to this announcement and why I was a little more okay with uh, um, Spider-Man being in Avengers and him being a Sony exclusive when that was an idea that was floating around. Um, and that was because the previously mentioned Insomniac games are also PlayStation exclusive. And they have their own version of Spider-Man that is that is wholly like Insomniac's version of Spider-Man with his own world and everything. And I was like, oh, okay. So the reason that they would be that they would be making him PlayStation exclusive is because they're going to take the Insomniac version of Spider-Man and essentially port him over to Avengers, just like, you know, obviously change some things, dumb him down a little bit from his game, um, combat-wise, and put him in Avengers. Now, there's a whole host of problems that come with that, but that makes sense, like, from a narrative point of view. Um, and the Game Reverse comics kind of implied that, too, where these are two comics that are, uh, in the Game Reverse universe, and they're being told, like, you know, the Avengers are over here, Spider-Man's over here, they're doing their own thing. Even in the Spider-Man PS4 game, when you go up to Avengers Tower, Spider-Man's like, man, I wonder what the Avengers are up to. They're off doing their own thing right now. Like, everyone assumed that they were talking about the Crystal Dynamics game. But here's the thing. The Spider-Man that they're putting in Marvel's Avengers, the Crystal Dynamics Avengers game, is not the Insomniac Spider-Man. I don't know why! So on the PlayStation blog post that detailed this announcement, Jeff Adams, who is the associate art director at Crystal Dynamics, went into a little more detail on on Spider-Man in this announcement. They talked about, you know, like, of course we're gonna bring costumes, our combat team is working on making him feel like Spider-Man and everything like that. Um, but, like, towards the top of the article, they talk a lot about how this is their own version of Spider-Man. This is a version of Spider-Man that is being created so that he makes sense that he that he can stand toe to toe with the likes of Thor, Iron Man, Cap, Hulk, you know, the Avengers, the rest of the cast of this game. There is not a single mention of Insomniac Spider-Man, uh, and it is heavily implied. And by he I say implied because they don't outright come out and say no, this is not Insomniac Spider-Man, but they. They say everything other than those exact words. This just hurts. This hurts my head on, on so many levels. Like, why do we need two Sony exclusive original Spider-Man running around? That's just unnecessarily complicated. And I know you might be thinking, well, Dylan slash Orem, YouTube boy, there's the alternate universe stuff in comic books all the time. There are different versions of Spider-Man running around all the time. There's an event called Spider-Verse and a sequel called Spider-Geddon. Why are you complaining about two different versions of Spider-Man running around in two different games? That's not my problem. My problem is that they made the Spider-Man in Avengers exclusive to Sony when there's already an exclusive Sony Spider-Man. I... <laughs> I don't get it. Is, is, it a, is it a rights thing? Was Sony like, hmm, we have the rights to Spider-Man in games, which they don't. So we're only going to put Spider-Man in, in Avengers if we can have him only. That's just not the case. He's in Ultimate Alliance, which is exclusive to the Switch. It hurts me internally why this is a thing. I, I obviously do not have a problem with alternate universe Spider-Man running around that are in you know, different universes happening at the same time. I don't have an issue with that. I take issue with this exclusivity for a multitude of other reasons. <laughs> I've mentioned the game reverse a few times, and that was by design, because this announcement also calls a lot of what the game reverse is into question. So, from my point of view, the way I understood it, the game reverse was a logo that they slapped onto 
the, the comic books that were being told in the titular Gamerverse. And the Gamerverse essentially comprised of two things, Insomniac Spider-Man and Marvel's Avengers by Crystal Dynamics. That's, that's, that's what it was. It was just a, a quick, catchy thing. You slap it on a book. It's like, okay, that's in this world. That isn't the case. And this announcement technically wasn't the, 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 the break to like fracture the two universes. It was Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, which I'll get to, but immediately I was thinking like, this just like, this calls everything about the game reverse into question from the comic point of view. Like, are they in canon at all? Are any of, of Insomniac Spider-Man's appearances in other Marvel comics, are those canon? Are they like the loose canon because they'll never be referred to by the actual source material? Sort of like, I don't know, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or... I think Dragon Ball has some stuff like that too. I don't know anything about Dragon Ball. I don't know why that came to mind. That, that's, that's what I'm saying is it just, it, it, it muddies the waters. Like people were fine understanding that these were comics that take place either before or after the Insomniac Spider-Man game. And these Avengers comics take place before the Crystal Dynamics game. And now it's like, are they canon? <laughs> are they an alternate universe? That's another splinter off of this already existing alternate universe, which is a thing that happens a lot, especially when like um, Batman Beyond is a good example where they were like, hey, here's the continuation of Batman Beyond in comics. And then DC was like, no, 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 fuck that. We're gonna make the actual continuation of Batman Beyond in comics. And there's like two futures of Batman Beyond. You know, there's, there's Avatar The Last Airbender comics that bridge the gap between Korra and Avatar. But if they ever actually animate in Avatar The Last Airbender, like season four to bridge that gap, I guarantee you they're gonna retcon a lot of the stuff that happened in the comics because comics always get, you know, overshadowed and stuff. Same with Smallville. There was a season whatever of Smallville in, in comics that I'm sure if they ever make a Smallville revival will be completely different than the comics and it will just retcon it entirely. I fucking forgot when I was filming this that they already did that to Smallville, kind of. When he shows up, when when Tom Welling's Superman shows up in the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover, he, he it's, it's as if the comics never happened. So yeah, they already did that shit. Okay, so I did a little research. And I can't blame this announcement for making all of that stuff about the Gamerverse confusing completely. Apparently, <laughs> the Gamerverse is not a universe in which these two video games take place. It is a logo. So apparently, Gamerverse was not a universe initially. From what I understand, it was just a logo for use in marketing that would be put onto like toys basically for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite when that came out in like 2017 or something. The point is, is Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite was the first time we saw Gamerverse, but they didn't make comics about that. And they definitely didn't make comics under the Gamerverse moniker. So, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to see how people would assume that Gamerverse meant the universe in which Spider-Man PS4 and Marvel's Avengers takes place. That is not the case by any way you look at it. Let me make this bigger scale. If they made an Avengers game, if they made the same Crystal Dynamics Avengers game and they put it on PlayStation exclusively, which Sony does still have some weird rights with this Avengers game where I think they they get uh, like early beta and, and early um, uh, release, I think, which is fine. That's that's common practice. You You pay a company a certain amount of money so you can release it on your console earlier. Who cares? Everyone gets it eventually. Um, and two weeks, not a big deal at all. That's generally kind of the time frame. Um, but what if you had Marvel's Avengers exclusive to Sony and Spider-Man exclusive to Sony? Y there is no reason aside from a laziness and not wanting to actually put the time in to write a cohesive world why they shouldn't be a cohesive world. So obviously that's not the case, but that is the case when you're when you're considering Spider-Man. <laughs> and this is all just from a narrative perspective. Maybe this is the, the the joker of the video game world that will, you know, bring the idea of alternate universe characters that are happening in the same time um, to the video game landscape, because that's not really something that we've seen 
too, too much. Like, they weren't making the Arkham games at the same time they were making another AAA Batman game. Like, Batman wasn't in, in Justice at the same time, but that entire thing is on the conceit of an alternate universe, even from the normal comic books. We haven't yet really gotten to a point with AAA games that are just, like, they don't really have a spin. Like, they're not a fighting game first with flavor on top. This is a Spider-Man game. This is an Avengers game. And these are both very AAA, highly published or polished games that um, there are two different Spider-Man in. And, uh, but they're both exclusive to PlayStation. <laughs> Narratively, it's not satisfying at all because the Gamerverse being the universe that these two versions of these uh, characters took place in made a lot of sense, was, was fun to speculate and think about, and is now just completely unnecessarily complex just because I'm, I'm sure these two companies just their writers didn't want to work together or they didn't have the infrastructure to allow them to work together. It is what it is, I guess. It is what it is. <laughs> so I've covered the, the marketing and the narrative side of things. I want to talk more specifically about the, the, the gameplay aspects of this uh, announcement, not specifically about Spider-Man. I have some concerns just about future characters coming to this game as a whole um, that I just want to briefly cover. My concerns about adding future characters into this game all stem from how they are treating each hero so far. Um, and that is to say that they're treating each of them like a very unique individualized class. And that's great. And that you kind of can't get away from that when you're making a character or a game about comic book characters, about superheroes, because they are usually very unique and uh, have their own quirks and power sets to them. At least so far, we have seen um, the Avengers that they're adding are pretty damn unique. And that, that concerns me, because as someone who it knows how long it takes to make a, a unique character, in a video game, not like by personal experience, just by being a gamer. It's it's worrying to see them put this amount of time and effort into making each character feel unique and giving them their own systems. Like, you know, Iron Man has basically two different playstyles for flight and grounded mode. Um, Thor has his uh, hammer throw thing, is his his God of War hammer throw. <laughs> um, I like that. I like that people consider the, the, the Mjolnir throw as a God of War thing, even though the God of War thing was just, you know, you know his axe is just a ripoff of Mjolnir in the first place. Anyway, Black Widow has stuff, I'm sure. Uh, Miss Marvel has her embiggening and, and um, I believe she can like jump and latch onto stuff. Uh, Cap has, has his like shield ricocheting stuff. It's, there are systems that are specific to these characters. So when you're making a new hero, you basically just have to make new systems depending on who the hero is. And the ones that they've officially announced so far are Hawkeye, which you already have like shooting and aiming in with, with Iron Man, Cap, and Thor. So that you can kind of get away with and you have projectile weapons with, with Black Widow. That doesn't concern me that much. Um, but the other two, uh, Hank Pym, which wasn't like officially announced, but he's, he's coming. He was like the first one they teased and Spider-Man. Hank Pym, you could say like, oh, Kamala already grows and, and, and I don't think she gets smaller, but she grows. So you could say that the technology, they already have systems for um, embiggening and shrinking things. Uh, and he has like a big gun, I think, um, that presumably shrinks and grows things. So you could say, you know, that probably won't take too much dev time. They already have the system with that. One of the one of the heaviest criticized things about most Spider-Man games is the web swinging. It's the first thing people look at. Is it good? Is it as good as Spider-Man 2? Now, is it as good as Insomniac's Spider-Man, which is what everyone thought Spider-Man 2's web swinging felt like? That is that is what is going to be looked at. So if, you know, if you have a Spider-Man in your game, he's got a web swing. And for most people, his webs need to attach to things and they need to be physics-based. That's an entire system of your game that you have to put in if you're if you're going to put Spider-Man in there. Like it, people will be absolutely pissed if his webs just attach to to nothing up in the air. They just go off screen and you're just web swinging like in uh, I think one of the amazing Spider-Man games or you know Lego Lego Marvel's Avengers or Le the Lego games. He does that too. He just kind of he basically flies just with an animation. People are going to hate that. Myself included. That would suck. I would rather not play as Spider-Man if I can't do the the the, you know, the, the classic web swinging. I don't need it to be like as in depth 
as insomniacs, but I would at least like to look at the edge of something and web swing to it. Or web swing away from stuff and do some goofy cool moves. That's Spider-Man. I want to feel like Spider-Man. I want to feel like Batman. <laughs> and with Spider-Man specifically, this gets kind of my, my conspiracy brain uh, moving a little bit. Like, is, is the reason that he is not Insomniac Spider-Man so that they can set him apart gameplay-wise from Insomniac Spider-Man? Are they trying to temper expectations to say like, hey, he isn't Insomniac Spider-Man, so if he can't do all of the things exactly like Insomniac Spider-Man, you can't complain, because he's a different one. He never learned how to web swing as well as, as that guy. That guy's better than him. Like, what? <laughs> That's so stupid. Also, I just thought of this. If you're selling this, this Spider-Man character only to people who presumably have already played the PlayStation Spider-Man because they probably already have a PlayStation, then they're just gonna want to play as that Spider-Man even more. It's gonna be way more rare that you get someone who has never touched Insomniac Spider-Man and plays Avenger Spider-Man as like, oh, this feels good. I don't care that he doesn't, you know, web swing all over the place with perfect precision. That's not, I, that's, that's gonna be very rare. Also, crossplay is a concern with this character being exclusive as well. They've been really cagey about whether or not the game's even gonna have crossplay. But for the sake of this argument, let's assume that they do implement crossplay at some point between uh, all the systems PC, Xbox, PlayStation. I, I don't think it's coming to Switch. Highly doubt it. Ouya, I know it's coming to Ouya. Well, how is Spider Man gonna work? in that scenario. Am I gonna log on to my PC version of Avengers and see someone play Spider-Man? And then I'm like, oh, I wanna play Spider-Man, let me go pick Spider-Man. And then there's just a big thing that says, hi, my name is John Sony, fuck you, buy our $8 million console if you wanna play this one character in this one video game. I'd be like, what? Why? This, overall, this it just feels like a really hollow business decision. Like I mentioned earlier, I, I can't see a, a positive, like a genuine positive, as to why they would be putting Spider-Man only on PlayStation. The only reason I could see from like a developmental aspect is if they were just porting Insomniac Spider-Man over to Avengers and they were like, oh, we can use some of the same code or something because it's on PlayStation. Even though that makes no sense because there are two entirely different engines made by two entirely different companies. So there's no reason. There's just not a reason. I'm gonna piss, come, and cry. This isn't fucking 2007 or whenever Soul Calibur Xbox 360 came out. You want Darth Vader or you want Yoda? Pick a side. It's not the time. You want to play as Link on the PlayStation? What, are you fucking stupid? No, this isn't that. I really hope they change this, this very locked down exclusivity in some way. Like, I, honestly, I would be fine. I would hate this, but I would be more okay if they just had Spider-Man be free on PlayStation and you had to pay for him on other consoles. They're not gonna do that because they have uh, very clearly stated many times that all post-launch characters will be free, which is nice. Or even if they just did like a staggered release, just like they're doing now, where you get Spider-Man a month early if you play on PlayStation and then he comes to the rest of the consoles. Or, and I don't understand why they're not just doing this one <laughs> that I'm about to say, Put Spider-Man on all of them, on all the consoles, and then just make a shitload of cosmetics that are ported over from Insomniac Spider-Man and make those exclusive to PlayStation. The cosmetics already cost real money, as, as far as I know. If they don't, they should. I mean, I don't want them to, but like, that's money. I know people have to make money. I know people gotta make a living. I'm not, I don't want everything for free. If somebody comes crying about, ooh, I want my white, my white Spider-Man logo, on my chest, it's like, well, it could be worse. And also it doesn't matter, it's a cosmetic. You can still play as Spider-Man. It doesn't matter what he looks like, it's fine. Put him in his tidy whities I guess that, I guess that would be a, an insomniac cosmetic as well. Cause he has that in the PS4 game. Anyway, I don't know why they, just do that, please. Uh, please, Mr. Sony, I'll suck your dick. Oh, also, by the way, um, completely unrelated, Orem's Corner, all Orem's Corner videos will now exclusively be uploaded to Vimeo. You can only watch them there. No, they're not coming here anymore. Except for, um, uh, every once in a while, I'll take a, uh, iPhone video of me taking a shit and I'll upload it on here. 